Today, it is Paul, myself, Jacob, and Steve here in the recording studio to look at websites today. We're going to be reviewing websites and talking about what's good and what can be improved with them, and not only doing the uh, front end look at them, but also the technical back end of the website. So, Paul, would you introduce us to a website we're looking at today? Well, sure. First of all, the other day I had this thought where we would be able to sort of deconstruct a website live. Uh, before you know millions of our studio audience and so we're recording this on video um, and if you're driving you should be watching the video at the same time um, but if you, if you if you don't have the video now you can look at that in our show notes but basically we're going to take different uh, websites and deconstruct them say you know what's good what's bad um, and what we would do differently and we encourage you guys to send in websites for us to look at our first one is www.granitprop.com g-r-a-n-i-t-e-p-r-o-p dot com and uh, it's a real estate investment property management and leasing advisory services website so um, as Jacob said we have Jacob as our host today myself Paul Parisi and Steve Miller who is of he he was on our Pokemon team, uh, Pokemon Go team, but that has since dwindled. Yeah, and the, hype, popular, the, hype, the hype has died. The already. hype has died, and so <laughs> he, he he moved out of that the, system. And the real is his data plan got maxed out. <laughs> That's right, exactly. <laughs> so, Paul, could you kind of give us a rundown of just kind of like the basics of this website? And then I think Steve's going to give us a few of the technical ideas of what's going on here. Sure. First of all, you know, one of the things you want to look at when you're looking at any website is how much vertical space you use uh, before you get to interesting content. This, um, I'm looking at it on a fairly high resolution screen, the recording you'll see, but you'll see really the upper third is dedicated to uh, a changing black and white picture um, with a, uh, a tagline on the side granite properties inspiring people to flourish through the places we create which i think we found was there is that their vision or mission statement i believe that's their purpose statement their purpose statement. and we had okay. to kind of dig around in the about us right section we'll get there right and you know I, there's a lot of words on here and there's uh some rotating graphics and things like that and up at the top left we're going to jump right into this there's a really cool thing that says view our live construction camera feeds so, you know, you could you could click on that and imagine that they're a construction company or read that. Um, but they're really not. They look like, I mean, they say real estate investment, property management, and leasing advisory services. But yet, when you start to dig into the site, it looks like they have a bunch of properties that they lease. Right. So they, they are a, a company that holds, you know, a big office building and will lease that to people. I'm just guessing based on what it says on their website. Right. So it's not clear whether they refurb or do construction or do leasing. It's probably the latter. Well, but yeah, but they got a construction. So I think they're doing, you know, like uh, we're in New England. So there's a lot of different uh, sites uh, that have been old mill buildings and things that have been redone and what are you doing there, Steve? Uh, I'm paying attention. Okay. Sorry, I fell asleep there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> are you talking about something? Um, but, you know, these old mill buildings um, have sort of re, uh, reborn as uh, beautiful apartments or uh, condos or office buildings. And so maybe they're doing something like that. But um, I'm going to just click on this to show you, our viewers at home, that when I go to camera one, uh, I see a wall a corner of a wall it looks like an outlet in the wall and some sort of flashing light alien signaling aliens or something like that it's it's sort of scary and i can uh, choose camera two and all of the other ones camera two through however many uh camera 64 are all say stealth monitoring and you know um this is this is to me is not a great uh is not a great testimony here. This feels like, you know, like CSI, like someone stumbles yeah. on a website and they yeah. catch a murder on accident That's on this right. camera. That's what I was thinking <laughs> of when I first saw it. Then I realized the purpose of it. But So, well, I'm not really sure what the purpose of it is because, you know, it doesn't show any construction cranes or people putting up walls or putting in carpet or something like that. And it's taking up what might be the most valuable real estate on the website, the top left corner. You know, English speakers read from left to right. So, uh, and then we've got granite over on the right-hand side in down a bit, you know, and, um, and then they've got a 2015 award for best small and medium workplaces, which, which is great, but 
uh, one of the things uh, a good friend of mine who's a serial entrepreneur started 26 companies says when you write an email or a letter you want to count the number of eyes and the number of views and the number of views should be at least twice the number of eyes right that's good and this doesn't say that it says you know view our live construction camera feed are the, we're the best place to work um, you know so it's 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 like well, what's in it for me yeah that's what I really look at you know and and so if, if we and if we click about us as we sort of dive into this yeah I did a website review for somebody one time and I counted up the number of our pronouns on mm-hmm. it and there was on every page within the footer and header 16 hours I was like guys nobody cares about you as yeah, much as right. you do they do that's correct so you know jumping into about us uh, it is again they're re- re- reiterating this I don't know somewhat ne- they're creating exceptional work environments and so that, does that mean they come in and design a building for a company you know like GE is moving into Boston right. uh, from Connecticut would this be a company you'd call that would be you know the architectural firm to do that right I don't I don't think it is but I'm saying that wording would evoke that to me mm-hmm. um, you know so we can dig through all of these and uh, but I'd like to take sort of a pause and, and talk about some of the technical aspects that are hidden to the ordinary eye. Uh, we've run a bunch of our tools on this from you know, in uh, Google Site Speed or what is it? Google Page Speed Page Insights. Speed. Yeah, and um, really very interesting things that are going on. So, Steve, why don't you summarize some of those? Yeah. So, unfortunately, the website ranks rather low on Page Speed currently. What is it? Uh, it's 40 out of 100. And okay. just for context for our viewers, it, it's it's tough to fight page speed. They're really, they're really hard on you. But your 95 is super well respected and right. 80 is kind of necessary at this right. point to get a good rank. It's sort of like uh, a grade in high school. I mean, an 80 oh, gotcha. would be a B. That's a good point. You know, and an A plus A, you know, would be in the 90s. Uh, what is it again? A 40? It's a 40, yeah. A 40. So, so that'd be repeating the grade. You'd have to repeat the grade, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this, shame. this website <laughs> has been stuck in ninth grade for a while. Right. Okay. So that's now, what that's measuring is how quickly that site will display on a average connection. So all of the different things that are required to render that site before it shows up and be usable, it's getting a 40 out of 100. Which isn't good. It yeah, needs what, to be improved. What do they look for? Isn't it like 200 milliseconds before the server responds? Yeah. Like when you say, hey, server, I'm coming to your website. Start sending me stuff. It expects a 200 millisecond turnaround. Right. Unfortunately, this site, so before it even starts loading, it says the server responded in 2.5 seconds. 2.5 seconds. So, so that's a that's like a year or two in internet time. Sure, it absolutely is because people at about three seconds are going to shut you down. Two seconds is really for the, the, the page has to be fully loaded, fully rendered in about right. two, less than two seconds. So now if we were to look at that, technically, what's the problem here? They're on a slow server, okay. basically. So um, Or the server is badly misconfigured. So go ahead. You had some other statistics. Uh, yeah. And now I don't know. Uh, I do know who's hosting them. Uh, it's a smaller host. Uh, but it, I'm guessing that they're missing some basic things they could do. Uh, I believe that they're wor- running a WordPress site from what I can tell. And uh, they don't have most of their files and are not compressed basically on their server. Mm-hmm. And also their scripts are not minified. So with script, you can take out spaces, unnecessary spaces and returns to be able to save right. space on the load. And it doesn't look like any of that has been done with this website, okay. which is unfortunate. Uh, well, but that hurts page load time and right, credibility in Google's when eyes. When I um, loaded the page for the first time, I noticed that there was a picture on one of the pages. I think they about us. And that picture sort of loaded and unrolled like a window shade slowly. I could see it sort of draw. What that means, uh, that indicates, is that you're using a very large picture but telling it to render in a small space. So instead of uh, you're taking an enlargement, if you will, from the old days and putting it into a snapshot or a wallet size. And so a lot more pixels and bits have to be transferred for it to display. So just simply sizing the images to the appropriate uh, size would improve the performance and feel of the site greatly. So go ahead now. What else? Absolutely. Um, Looks like some for, for images and for scripts, there's also browser caching is not specified Mm -hmm. um so there's nothing communicating to the browser saying hey store this file for a certain amount of time 
to be able to load it faster if a client or an employee comes back to the site. Mm -hmm. um, caching can be used basically to store things locally on the machine. Yeah. Um, and that way it can load certain things faster and have a better experience when it's come back to the site. Right. So it doesn't have to load them because it already has it. Correct. It's yeah. cached it. Um, one of the other things we like to do in, in looking at sites, we'll get into more technical things here, is there's there's a news area. And if you look at the news area, the last news item, or right now it is August, no, almost August, July 2016. And the latest news item is uh, July 2015. So it's a year old. So that doesn't speak well of what's going on. I mean, a Not certain... to mention that the one before that yeah. is almost another year behind that. Yes. So the, the, la the last two news items are from the last two years. Right. Yeah, and if you look at it, so they had one in January 2014, uh, two in January, one in February, one in August, one in September, and then we jumped to... 7 2015 so i you know there's there may or may not be news but that doesn't give a consumer or a buyer a feeling that this are they are, you you might ask are they still in business right yeah i was actually just about to search that whether they are still in business because the site's been so little updated right the latest update i can find is that news um i looked at you know archive.org to see any site changes mm -hmm. maybe a couple pictures have been moved around uh, no code's been modified in a while. It's right. it's really it's been dead in the water for over the last year. Right. So now you know one of the other things that when you put your site out there, you want people to find it. You want them to comment on it. You want to engage with that. You want people to um, uh, be able to say, "Hey, I found something interesting on here." And we use Twitter and Facebook and maybe even YouTube for that um, to socialize things. They do have Twitter and Facebook, but it's at the bottom right, you know, as you scroll down as far as you can get. And so, you know, I'd really want to sit down with this organization and say, you know, what what's your goal of the website? What's the purpose of it? Is it to so, um, sort of cement a brand identity so that people can feel good that you're in business and you're here to stay? Well, this really doesn't do it with the news issues that we've talked about. Uh, it doesn't do it with the speed um, you know, and so there's some concerns there, you know, the, uh, the, the, the contact us page on the other hand is pretty good. It's, um, it's very clear. I might make the text a little bigger. It's a little bit hard to read. Um, you know, a little, little friendlier or especially the phone number. Uh, but that's nice. You know, I can get all of their major offices, all of that. I might also go in here and have a contact form you know that's not there there's now so what you're forcing me to do is pick up the phone or email somebody and if i email greg and in in plano i might it might have to go to somebody in california now they can forward it and all that but i would expect a a form to deal with all of that yeah you want to reduce the amount of effort that you're requiring of your user and by requiring them to open up their email type out an email do something outside of the window that you already have them in um, is bad user design and it um, it potentially loses your business because it requires them to do extra work. Right. Yeah, every click uh, that somebody has to decide to do reduces the effectiveness 50% approximately. And so as you, as you look at this site, you know, the About Us page has, and I'm clicking on it, and you can see the delay in it, you know, has uh, six subcategories. So you know, there looks like there's a lot of a lot of depth to it, um, but it's slow. You know, it's slow to get in here. I click on expertise. I've got another six subcategories. Properties. When I go into properties, I have a uh, uh, a nice you know uh, extruded map, and I can click on Atlanta, and I can load this. It's very slow, and it shows me a nice robin's egg blue. Uh, area which happens to be the middle of the ocean if I drag this over yeah, I noticed you that. find out that you're well here let's zoom out actually yeah so here we are we're right in the middle of the open super zoomed in which you know I think it'd be better to you know really be looking at the Atlanta area with all of the different uh, icons just around there that would be certainly more effective than what it is. So what's interesting to me is 
they've obviously put some money and effort into building this Mm -hmm. and launched it at some point. I don't know what the copyright date at the bottom was. I didn't see a copyright on the bottom. Um, It's been about the same. I was digging through archives of it. It's been about the same for a year or two at this point. They've been on the web for a while, actually, which is interesting. They go back to 99. Okay, so they see some value in a website, but yet they've got all these broken things or, you know, things that aren't really thought through. And one of the things that we notice as, as consultants in this area is people are just too close to it. Yeah. And they overlook yeah. it. They filter it. It's like, you know, you don't see the things in your own house that are out of place because you're just used to that. And so having somebody come in that's detached from it and can say, what What do you mean here? What do you hope to get? And and also, you know, to be to be frank, I think there's a lot. There's too many words. Yeah. I think they do. Uh, it's poor space management on the website mm-hmm. because, I mean, you come to the website and the the first thing you're drawn to is the top section. And what you see in the top section is this this video camera icon that is not really it's not clear what it's helping to bring you into Mm -hmm. and what story it's telling you absolutely and then you have these kind of randomized pictures i'm not sure are these the owners the board members the employees are these customers what's the relationship between these people and what you're actually trying to bring me into and then the it's poor space utilization with the uh purpose statement because if that's your pur- purpose statement, you want everybody to get that nice, big, and bold right up front. Um, and it's a bit kind of uh, subdued. Yeah. yeah, I'd say so. It's very passive. Yeah. Uh, and it's... Um, and the colors reinforce the passiveness. Mm-hmm. Co- I mean, in terms of website design and psychology, blue engenders trust, which is good for somebody that's doing property management. You want that to be a subliminal message. But the blue is almost a bit too understated. Um where it's well, a bit passive. Yeah, and it's also contrasted with this red over on the right, the great place to work. So it's it's sort of like, you know, am I am I is trust the most important, but then I'm distracted by it's a great place to work. Right. Are as opposed to, to what do I want as a business owner? That's great that it's a great place to work and that's a good thing and that means that the people that are going to uh, service, you know, do services for me and, and deliver the product are going to be happy about right. it. Right. But what are you guys actually doing for me? Right. It probably communicates company stability for the long haul. Yep. But in terms of the immediate first 30 seconds of the website or first 10 seconds of the website, you're trying to pitch somebody that you can do investment and leasing, um, property management uh, and leasing best. Right. Rather than a company that has good services for their right. employees. Right. And it's striking me here. There's no video either. Yeah. Uh, now, video is a leading a leading idea so if they did this a year ago they might not have thought about this but i i gotta think that some of the principles in this company can be compelling in why you should use them and i think that's a critical thing to get them to do in a small short 15 second video or or a video of some of their clients you know to say you know we were struggling with this this and this and granite came in and fixed it you know, mm-hmm. and gave us this solution. I just think that would be overwhelmingly positive. Yeah. And those things get socialized as well. Yeah. yeah. You know, what's interesting is, so this is a small to medium business. Um, I'm just, as I look through things, I can't predict everything that's going on with them. But they're, if you look at their, the fortune review that mm-hmm. talks about them being a good small to medium yep. business, their employee to revenue ratio, I mean, they're making a lot of money. Um, and it looks like, as I look through news articles, they're pretty reputable in the industry. They're building important things re- mm-hmm. on a regular basis. Um, what strikes me is it's possible that they think, okay, well, we're making good business. Why would I improve my website? Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, it was funny. I was talking to one of our clients the other day, and I, I don't remember exactly what we were talking about, but he looked at me and he said, you know, if someone comes to your company and asks you guys, you, you want more business? Are you going to say no? Yeah. Are you are you are you full up, or do you have room to to make more money? Right. We're like, well, we would we would say yes all the time. You know, yeah. we're we're there to make money. We'd hire more people if more people sure. came. Um, and so, I think that it's possible that in the web area, they're sitting contentedly on what they have. They say we make a lot of money. We're well known in the industry. Why would we need a better website? It's like, well, yeah. you don't know who you're missing right. by That's investing true. in the website. And a web is an easy. Uh, outward marketing tool. Honestly, they could be making more money. I don't. I don't know enough about the industry to say what 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 it could enhance, but right. they might and, be sitting on an easy resource here. And their website could utilize them to be a more established expert in the um, arena. I. But from the look of their website, at face value, to me, it does not strike me that they would be an expert. That, for example, I would want to invite to be a keynote speaker at a conference or something about mm. 
this sort of issue. Right. Well, certainly not by the website. It would have to be some relationship you had yeah. external to this website. And the unfortunate thing is that, for example, if I were in the audience of somebody that yeah. were speaking from this company and I went to their website, I would, there would be a very severe disconnect because I'm sure that their their employees and their leaders in the company are highly competent, um, highly established, and highly knowledgeable in their area of expertise. Their website does not back up what I'm sure is the truth about them. So now I've sort of transitioned just to their Twitter page. They've got 1,800 followers, which is phenomenal. Yep, I saw that. they got 629 likes. Um, and they've got tweets as or as late as July 18th. So somebody's tweeting July 18th, yeah, July 13th. Yeah, I find 13th. that interesting that there's somehow there's a disconnect between their news feature on their website and their news feature or their Twitter feed. Sure. I mean, they should be commingled at worst. Yeah. You know, so I mean, at least put the tweets in the news feed. Mm -hmm. um, so let's let's go back to the to the site. Now, some of the more you had said, Steve, and you did some analysis. It's an older version of WordPress that should be upgraded. Or yeah, we had a little discussion beforehand. We're like, should we discuss this? You know, it's 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 an old enough version that there are security liabilities. But then we said, you know, it took me thirty seconds to. I didn't know off the top of my head how to see the version of WordPress. Yeah. And it took me 30 seconds to Google, how do I see right. this? Okay, I found it. Okay, I found the security liabilities. So mm -hmm. I'm not worried about throwing it out there, just generally. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that's a concerning thing for your business. I don't know what important information they might have stored on this. There's, you know... Or, yeah, or, or it might be defaced and reputation suffers and things like that. So, yeah, exactly. Right. And, you know, so we were, as we were talking about it, it was, you know, should we say this? Well, all the bots out there that go and seek to destroy websites will crawl the site, whether we tell you it's you know, WordPress 1.0 or WordPress 4.0. Well, the bots listen so, to our podcast. That's too, for true. Guidance. That's yeah. true. I forgot about that. But um, so the bots have already found it. And, you know, um, there are some exploits. You're, you know, you don't seem to have um, some of the more exploitable things enabled, such as comments and things like that, which is great. Uh, but again, you know, it's something that, um, you know, there's a lot of business owners who want to buy a website and be done. And that is just not the way the world works anymore. Right. I mean, it doesn't. About 18, every 18 to 24 months, you need to be updating your website. Well, absolutely. I mean, that that's critical. But I think what's even more important is you really have to come to terms with maintaining it. Yeah. Putting news in, putting things that change. People, um, I mean, if you went to the store, you know, and you think of the old stores that had window dressing, and they always had the same display there you would eventually not see it anymore. And so a website is very much like that. You want the new model to be displayed. That's why they come out with new cars every year. Right. You know, not because we need them, uh, but because people's interests are wane. Yeah. And that's critical. So, you know... Um, so that would either mean that we are trying to encourage people with that specific point to have somebody on staff in the company who does it, or, for example hire us at Save Your Wives to be able to manage their website for them. Well, I think, there's, plug -in. <laughs> I think there's a lot of different ways to think about that. The, um, the, the problem is, is you need such a broad um, spectrum of skills. It's rare to find them in one person. Mm -hmm. And if you are able to find them in one person, you're probably not going to want to pay them the amount that they're worth or enough to keep them over right. time. So, you know... Um, I think more so, you know, one of the things I always um, I joke about is, you know, why don't the schools and the towns schedule for maintenance, but budget for maintenance on their buildings? Because they know that in 30 years they're going to have to build a new school. So why don't they save one thirtieth of the amount every year and, you know, put in a, an amount and at 30 years, oh, we got the money in the bank. Sounds logical. It sounds like, you know, what we should do, you know, in, in New England, you have to replace your roof every 25 years. And if a roof is $20,000, you save one twenty-fifth of that. Well, that's discipline. But in business, we actually do that. We plan for capital expenditures. We plan for budgets, things like that. And I think the website has to have a line item. It mm -hmm. might be under the marketing department, right? but it has to be something you're committing to. Um, you know, I we frequently meet with people and we sort of ask them this question, are you planning to stay in business or are you just in this for the next six months or whatever? Right. And it, and it's, it takes them aback. It's like, well, yeah, we really are trying to stay in business. Okay, so what are you going to do about that? You know, are yeah. you going to invest in technology? Um, are you going to invest in websites, et cetera, et cetera? 
So those are the kind of things that I, I think are critical. So you asked, do I hire somebody? Um, the problem with hiring somebody is that that expertise can walk out the door at any time. Right. Uh, in the best case scenario, you know, you get somebody, they want to move, you know, it's no animosity. They're just moving somewhere. Uh, so, you know, that gets difficult. Well, we could hire them remotely, et cetera. And, and there are a lot of people that work that way. Uh, there are lots of organizations like Save Your Labs that are out there to help you do that, um, to hold you accountable. And also, I think more importantly, uh, the difference is if you hire an internal person, they're an internal person. They view it with the mindset of your company. If you hire an outside person, they're bringing us like, well, why in the world would I want to do business with you? Mm -hmm. That's a great question to ask because if the website doesn't answer that, there is much less likelihood it's going to convert people. Mm -hmm. And and one of the other things that, you know, just to be very clear here, um, if we look at this website, um, there's no call to action. Yep. You know, there is nothing saying to the user, to the visitor, this is what we want you to do here. Right. And so, you know, when you plan for no results, what is it when you plan? Uh, what's the, the... When you don't plan, you don't get anything? Yeah. When, yeah. You know, planning to... If you don't plan to succeed, you'll... Or you'll try, you, try again? Yeah. Fail. If you <laughs> you'll fail, fail if you to try. plan, you plan to fail. <laughs> you know? That's, <laughs> that's, what, like, that's, yeah, yeah. that's what it is. <laughs> if you don't plan to quote the quote, then you're going to yeah, mess right. up the quote. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> if, uh, if you don't plan, if you plan to, if you don't plan to fail, you fail to plan, I don't know. Go so ahead. one of the dynamics that we were noticing on the website is the mobile accessibility, or right. mobile version. Yeah. Well, there's two things with that we noticed. One is we made the browser smaller. I don't know if this will work with uh, Google Hangouts. No, it won't. Um, let me take it out of Zoom. And I'm going to go and make the browser smaller. And you notice it's not responsive. It doesn't respond or change size based on the browser window. Uh-huh. So that's one thing that is sort of silly. So if you open it up and you make it smaller, it doesn't re reform to look good. But if you open it up on an iPhone or an Android device, you get a completely different site with a colorful menu um, that says, you know, a, a big building um, picture that says granite underneath it and then five bands of color about. And I click on about and I go to a basically blank white page that says our purpose. And no navigation, nothing. So now I have to go back. So um, they probably got sold a mobile version of a website by some person that came in and said, we can do a mobile version of your website or to convert a few pages. Or sometimes I've seen where people just have like a plug-in that you put on your website mm -hmm. that basically kind of strips it down to like the bare essentials of like 10% of the website. Right. And it makes it a mobile version. And that's not great. Yeah. I mean, this is not going to make somebody think... If, if if you were to judge Granite by their mobile website, you would not have as good of an experience or uh, judgment as the the desktop website. Right. And not to mention that, I mean, in terms of finding a solution, this sort of thing is super easy to do. I mean, in terms of making a mobile website, it, it's a bit phenomenal to me that uh, there's m quote mobile versions of websites today when it's so sure. easy. Well, with... it's it's I don't know that it's easy. You have to think through how things yep. rearrange. Uh, and so you know, if you've just finished a website mm -hmm. and somebody comes to you and says, "Hey, it doesn't work on a mobile phone," you're like, "Oh man, we just thought that was done." And that's the thing I think you know I was hinting at e earlier is the people were th thinking this is done now. Okay, we know we just talked about mobile and all that, but I'd want to say, how long is it done for? You know, is it done for 18 months? Right. And if, if we want a new one in 18 months, are we willing to start 12 months into this or, or eight months into this? Yeah. To give somebody a, a chance to build it again? And then you sort of, well, you almost reduce the time to say, well, just let's continuously improve the website. Yeah. And, and do things and have a new website roll out every 18 months. But, you know, somebody in charge of content, somebody in charge of all of the news, et cetera. Yeah. Steve, I think, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say a big thing to jump back is really that um, getting a fresh view on your website, the internal mm -hmm. versus external view. It's very yeah. easy to get comfortable. Because I remember working on a website that I had worked on for a while for a client, and uh, someone else sat down and reviewed it basically with me that had not looked at it before and just pointed out all these obvious things that I sat there. I mean, this is a website for a client, not for a company I work with. Right. Um, 
So I'm not even directly connected to it. And I had become so, it had become so internalized how it was to me. Yeah. And when someone sat down and said, oh, this, this, and this could be better. Yeah, you it was become, just like, blind, you become it was, blind to it. It was revolutionary and it, yeah. it shouldn't have been. It would have been, I might have seen the same things, but. uh, Did I, did I hurt your feelings, Steve, when I sat down and did that? Was that me? <laughs> I don't think that <laughs> okay. was you. No, that was when you were talking about him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. If yeah, it was, I, mean, I wouldn't give you the credit. Yeah, for me, even with organizations that I'm involved with, even though I do web design with Save Your Labs, I actually don't do the websites for organizations I'm involved with because it, I'm right. too close to the heart of the issue and I'm, I'm too blind, like you're talking about, to the very things that I want to be prominent and I get too familiar with it. Yeah, there was a, there was a great joke post on medium.com the other week. It was it was a fake chain of emails from the CEO to the yes, design and development teams. And yeah. <laughs> we should we should put that in the show notes because yeah. it's it's beautiful and it's just, you know, it's the CEO emailing the whole company basically like, "Hey guys, I read that words on websites are bad. Take all the words off." Yeah, exactly. And then like 3 hours later, just kidding, put the words back on. Just like, yeah, yeah. And, you know, by the end he's put everything back the exact way it was, but it's, you know, I, you get worried when people that close to it are making all of the calls for the website because it just becomes personal preference and yeah. you're blind to it. So for the website itself, for granted, if we were to be doing work for them or we were to give them you know, a few key ideas of how to improve the website, uh, what would be a few takeaways? Because we mentioned that there's a server issue, there's compression dynamics that are off, um, the news feed is um, not synced between Twitter on a website, contact form site itself is a bit dated where right. would you go with paul well i would certainly do you know the the emergency response would be to uh fix the speed mm -hmm. um i mean those are easy easy gimmies you know uh make sure the images are optimized everything's optimized so it loads as fast and as snappy as it can be uh i would probably remove the camera feeds thing mm -hmm. immediately i might you know have a discussion i wouldn't change the whole design I, I think it should be responsive right but that would be more of a second or third tier yeah. Um, I would probably um, try and reduce the amount of vertical space that's okay. lost because you know that's the most valuable space up there. I think it would look uh, a lot different if you just took everything off of that first half inch up here at the top and almost just cut it out and pushed it right up against the browser uh, bar. Yeah. Um, so those would be the first things. You know, some of the the um, making sure that somebody is adding new news. Yeah. Let's unify the Twitter feed and the news feed. Uh, I think that would be tremendously beneficial. Um, the other thing is, is you know, there's this whole concept of inbound marketing, right? And the uh, in the old days, you'd have outbound marketing, where you would, you know, say, you go out to somebody and you say, please come and to my store or whatever. It right. Is. Well, inbound marketing is different. You motivate the consumer mm -hmm. to come in. Right. And, and to get something and usually it's free it's sort of like in in retail where you say the first 500 guests will get a uh, you know a free steak you know, right, right. buy one get one free or something like that right. so what what's happened now is this inbound marketing is you write an article or an ebook or something that is of interest to your to your right. target audience and you right. basically show that to them and say hey come to our website and download this right. and give me your email they right. pay with an email. And with this company, it would seem to me that, you know, if they are a leader in their or uh, in their field and, for example, they have, you know, best practices or one of the best places to work, it seems to me there's at least two or three ebook ideas there for how to do best practices for, you know, the uh, leasing services that they do, the type of clientele that they reach. Mm -hmm. And then also there might be an ebook for managers and CEOs of how to run a company that wins these sort of awards of like best practices and right. best so that you are appealing across the board and that's just two or three basic ideas for ebooks absolutely i mean ebooks they're incredibly effective and i think that uh there's lots of opportunities in real estate management across the board and that's just two or three basic ideas for ebooks absolutely i mean ebooks they're incredibly effective and i think that uh there's lots of opportunities in real estate management we we have worked with uh it's called a vertical right it when depends. someone's in a, like a very niche yes, market yes it is we can cut that out so it don't sound too dumb okay, right that's okay fine. um <laughs> so obviously they work in a, a vertical like a very niche market yep. and uh i think that in some ways they this company or other companies like this might sit there and say no you don't understand our clientele are very defined and esoteric right. and we don't have a lot to gain um 
And I would kind of push back on that, and I would say, I bet you have some low-hanging fruit that you're just not picking right now that you're ignoring. Yeah. Uh, they've got a video linked on their front page, actually, but it's, like, bottom right, and mm-hmm. they could make that, you know, they could embed that on their site on the top to watch yeah. who is granted. Right. They could make a call to action. Maybe it isn't the typical contact form or free thing, but it could be, here, read our long description that most of our customers read about yeah. how we technically build things. It could be yeah. different for them. They probably do presentations. They could offer their presentation slides right. uh, in exchange for an email. Easily there's just a lot of there's a lot of stuff that we would modify somewhat for them because you know they're not going to average Joe on the street's not going to stumble across their site and say I want a residential building or I want a professional building. But yeah. they are going to say the the businessman might be more swayed mm-hmm. by easier access. Yeah, and I think that pointing out the the cta or the call to action um i think that would be one of the the main things i would want to drive at for improving the website is what is the call to action you're calling people to what do you want them to do with the website because otherwise it's kind of a glorified business card if you're just kind of saying who you are well i you know i agree with that but i was just thinking about this the other day glorified business card um you know is this supposed to be a business brochure or a business book about your business right or is it supposed to be a business card or is it just to be a pamphlet mm-hmm. and i think it has to be all of those things because right. there's different levels of engagement and you know one of the 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 rubrics of inbound marketing is it lets people come in and grab onto whatever level they want of interest yeah so you know you can have a site um the, the problem i think one of the problems with the site is it forces you to consume too much Right. You need to you need to understand way too much to get to their value proposition. Right. And that a lot of people aren't going to invest that time and energy. Right. You have to think about who your clientele is, what do they want, and then right. speak specifically to those needs. Absolutely. And make it make it crystal clear. Yeah, laser sharp. It has to be laser yeah. sharp to what you're me- you're messaging them with. Right. Excellent. Thanks guys for talking about this website and we'll have another episode about Uh, understanding what's going on with websites and the dynamics of the technical side and the customer side and how to improve that on our next episode of The Edge of Innovation.